Hello everyone, Ace here, and today I've decided to talk about something rather interesting. Specifically, a German wonder weapon from World War II that curiously appears to have actually been practical, even at the time that it was used. And amusingly, while it appears to be a success story, it should be noted that it was never actually used for its original intended purpose. And just as notable is the fact that despite all of this, the specific weapon appears to have flown under the radar. So to Today, let's talk about this particular vehicle, namely the Tauchpanzer, and the influence that it appears to have had on military technology. And I believe to understand the story of the Tauchpanzer, you have to understand the specific purpose for which it was built, namely Operation Sea Lion, or the planned but never carried out German invasion of the British Isles during World War II, which if the Germans were ever to even attempt, they would first need to find a way to provide armor support to the troops landing on the shores of England. The German response to this answer being to convert some of their Panzer III's and Panzer IV's into submersible tanks, which would be lowered into the ocean and drive along the bottom of the seabed before rising up from the water and engaging in combat. In order to accomplish this task, the Tauk Panzers were first made watertight with rubber seals that had small explosive charges on them that the crews could detonate in order to make the tank instantly combat ready once they got ashore. In addition, these tanks were fitted with special floating snorkels, which also had radio antenna fitted onto them, giving these tanks an oxygen supply, a maximum safe operating depth of about 15 meters or 49 feet, and the ability to receive radio communications in order to receive instructions to tell the tanks where to go, as the crews themselves would be unable to see where they were going whilst underwater. In addition to this, the Tauk Panzers were equipped with water pumps as a backup in case the tanks weren't quite as watertight as originally hoped, and in an emergency the crews were also given specialized equipment to help facilitate their escape should all else fail. Now as previously mentioned, because Operation Sea Lion never came to be, these tanks were never actually utilized for their original intended purpose. That said, they did nevertheless find use on the Eastern Front because it turns out that the Tauk Panzer was, unsurprisingly, also quite adept at river crossings, as was promptly demonstrated near the Polish town of Pratulin on the morning of June the 22nd of 1941, where Tauk Panzers were used to cross the Bug River and defend the bridgehead against Russian counterattacks. So this does show that the design could work, but how do we know it was truly practical? Well, the answer is because the Germans decided to ultimately adopt this idea as a standardized feature on some of their later armored fighting vehicles, most notably the Tiger Tank which was supplied its own snorkel that could be fitted prior to river crossings as well. In addition to this, the idea of adding snorkels to tanks hasn't exactly died out either, as the idea has actually taken off with a number of nations, most notably Russia, who has made it a standard feature on all of their modern tanks. Whilst on the side of NATO, the Leopard 2 is also capable of fitting snorkels, and in the case of the NATO tanks equipped with snorkels, it should be noted that these snorkels are actually made wider enough that the crew can utilize them to escape in an emergency. With all of this in mind, it's curious to keep in mind the fact that the origins of this particular technology seem to be so comparatively overlooked, especially despite the fame of the hypothetical what-if scenario that was Operation Sea Lion, and also despite the fact that the Tauk Panzer appears to have been a practical idea even at the time that it was created, which again is very much a rarity amongst German wonder weapons during World War too. Now for those curious, I will of course be leaving links in the description below to the sources that I have used. Although once again, due to the obscurity of this particular story, there aren't that many sources, although the amount of photographic evidence out there, as well as the fact that the technology is still used to this day, does show that the design was successful and forward thinking. And I also hope that you found this particular video to be interesting and informative. But in any case, this has been Ace. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out.